I admire your luck, Mr. Bond. James Bond. Doctor No is a 1962 spy film directed by Terence Young. It is the first film in the James Bond series starring Sean Connery, Ursula Andress, Joseph Wiseman and Jack Lord. It was adapted by Richard Malibum, Joanna Howard and Berkeley Maita from the 1958 novel of the same name by Ian Fleming. The film was produced by Harry Saltzman and Albert R. Broccoli, a partnership that continued until 1975. It was followed by From Russia with Love in 1963. In the film, James Bond is sent to Jamaica to investigate the disappearance of a fellow British agent. The trail leads him to an underground base of Dr. Julius No, who is plotting to disrupt an early American space launch from Cape Canaveral with a radio beam weapon. Although it was the first of the Bond books to be made into a film, Dr. No was the sixth of Fleming's series, beginning with Casino Royale. The film makes a few references to threads from earlier books and later books in the series as well, such as the criminal organization Spectre, which was not introduced until 1961 novel Thunderball. Produced on a low budget, Dr. No was a financial success, but the film received a mixed critical reaction upon release. It gained a reputation over time as one of the series' best installments. Dr. No also launched a genre of secret agent films that flourished in the 1960s. The film spawned a comic book adaptation and a soundtrack album as part of its promotion and marketing. Many aspects of the typical James Bond film were established in Dr. No. The film begins with an introduction to the character through a view of a gun barrel and a highly stylized main title sequence, both of which were created by Maurice Binder. It also introduced the iconic theme music. Production designer Ken Adam established an elaborate visual style as one of the hallmarks of the film series. The cast includes Sean Connery as James Bond, a British MI6 agent, codenamed 007. Ursula Andrus as Honey Ryder, a local shell diver making a living by selling Jamaican seashells to dealers in Miami. Andrus' spoken dialogue was dubbed by Nikki van der Zeele, and her singing voice was dubbed by Diana Coupland. Both were uncredited. Joseph Wiseman as Dr. Julius No, a reclusive member of Spectre. Jack Lord as Felix Later, a CIA operative sent to liaise with James Bond while he's in Kingston. This was Lord's only appearance as Later. Bernard Lee as M, the head of the British Secret Service. Lois Maxwell as Miss Moneypenny, the secretary to M. Peter Burton as Major Boothroyd, the head of the Q branch. Boothroyd is brought in by M to replace Bond's Beretta M1934 with a Walther PPK. This is Burton's only appearance as Q. Eunice Grayson as Sylvia Trench, a woman who meets Bond during a game of Baccarat at the London club La Cave. And John Kitzmiller as Quarrel, a Cayman Islander who was employed by John Strandaway to secretly go to Crab Key to collect rock samples. He also works with Felix later, before Bond's arrival. Ian Fleming first wrote Dr. No's a television outline for film producer Henry Mortigu III to promote the Jamaican tourism industry. After this project fell through, Fleming began meeting with Canadian film producer Harry Saltzman about making a screen adaptation. Although Fleming was not a fan of the kitchen sink realist genre Saltzman was known for producing after seeing Saturday Night and Sunday Morning, Fleming sold him the rights to all the James Bond novels except Casino Royale and Thunderball for $50,000. After Saltzman gained the rights to the novel, he initially had trouble financing the project. Screenwriter Molf Mankiewicz introduced Saltzman to Albert R. Cubby Broccoli, who wanted the rights to the novels and attempted to buy them from Saltzman. Saltzman did not want to sell the rights to Broccoli, instead they formed a partnership to make the films. A number of Hollywood film studios did not want to fund the films, finding them too British or too blatantly sexual. Eventually the two received authorization from United Artists to produce Dr. No to be released in 1962. The partnership between Broccoli and Saltzman lasted until 1975 when tensions during the filming of The Man with the Golden Gun led to an acrimonious split and Saltzman sold his shares to, to United Artists. Initially Broccoli and Saltzman wanted to produce the 8th Bond novel, 1961's Thunderball as the first film, but this was an ongoing legal dispute between the screenplay co-author Kevin McClory and Ian Fleming. As a result, Broccoli and Saltzman chose Dr. No. The timing was opposite, with claims that the American rocket testing at Cape Canaveral had problems with rockets going astray. The producer's first choice for director was Phil Carson, who asked for too high a salary. They offered Dr. No to Guy Green, Guy Hamilton, Val Guest and Ken Hughes to direct, but all of them turned it down. They finally signed Terence Young, who had a long background with Broccoli's Warwick films as director. Broccoli and Saltzman felt that Young would be able to make a real impression of James Bond and transfer the essence of the character from book to film. Young imposed many stylistic choices for the character, which continued throughout the film series. Young also decided to inject much humor as he considered a lot of the things in the film, the sex and the violence, and so on played straight, would be objectionable and would never go past the senses. But the moment you take the mickey out of it, put a tongue in cheek as it were, it seems to disarm people. 
The producers asked United Artists for financing, but the studio would only put up $1 million. Later, the UK arm of United Artists provided an extra $100,000 to create a climax where Dr. No's bass explodes. As a result of the low budget, only one sound editor was hired, and many pieces of scenery were made in cheaper ways, with M's office featuring cardboard paintings and a door covered in leather-like plastic. The room where Dent meets Dr. No costing only $745 to build, and the aquarium in Dr. No's base being a magnified stock footage of goldfish. Initially, producers Broccoli and Saltzman originally sought Cary Grant for the role of James Bond. They then discarded the idea as Grant would only be committed to only one feature film, and the producers decided to go after someone who could be part of a series. Richard Johnson had claimed to have been the first choice of the director, but he turned it down because he already had a contract with MGM and was intending to leave. Another actor purported to have been considered for the role was Patrick McGonaghan on the strength of his portrayal as spy John Drake in the television series Danger Man. McGonaghan turned down the role. Another potential Bond included David Niven, who later played the character in a 1967 parody of Casino Royale. There are several stories as to whom Ian Fleming personally wanted. Reportedly, Fleming favoured actor Richard Todd. Fleming's stepson, Paul Morgan, claims that Fleming preferred Edward Underdown. In his autobiography, When the Snow Melts, Cubby Broccoli said Roger Moore had been considered, but had been thought too young and perhaps a shade too pretty. In his autobiography, My Word is My Bond, Moore says he was never approached to play the role of Bond until 1972 for Live and Let Die. Moore appeared as Simon Templer on the television series The Saint, airing in the United Kingdom for the first time on the 4th of October 1962, only one day before the premiere of Dr. No. Ultimately, the producers turned to 31-year-old Sean Connery for the five films. It's often reported that Connery won the role through a contest set up to find James Bond. While this is untrue, the contest itself did exist, and six finalists were chosen and screen tested by Broccoli, Saltzman and Fleming. The winner of the contest was 28-year-old model named Peter Anthony, who, according to Broccoli, had a Gregory Peck quality, but proved unable to cope with the role. When Connery was invited to meet Broccoli and Saltzman, he appeared scruffy and in unpressed clothes, but Connery put on an act and paid off, as he acted in the meeting with, with a macho, devil-may-care attitude. When he left, both Saltzman and Broccoli watched him through the window as he went to his car, both agreeing that this was the right man for Bond. After Connery was chosen, Terence Young took the actor to his tailor and hairdresser and introduced him to the highlife restaurants, casinos and the women of London. In the words of Bond writer Raymond Benson, Young educated the actor in the waves of being dapper, witty and above all, cool. Casting was announced on November 3, 1961. For the first Bond girl, Honey Rided, Julie Christie were considered, but discarded as the producers felt she was not voluptuous enough. Martine Beswick was also rejected after being too inexperienced as an actress. Just two weeks before filming began, Ursula Andrews was chosen to play Honey after the producers saw a picture of her taken by Andrews' then-husband, John Derrick. Kirk Douglas persuaded Andrews to take the part at a party hosted by Derrick. To appear more convincing as a Jamaican, Andrews had tan painted on her and ultimately had her lines redubbed by voice actress Nikki van der Zeele due to Andrews' heavy Swiss-German accent. For Bond's antagonist, Dr. No, Ian Fleming wanted his friend Noel Coward, and Coward answered the invitation with No, No, No. Fleming then considered his step-cousin Christopher Lee would be good for the role of Dr. No, although by the time Fleming told the producers they'd already chosen Joseph Weissman for the part. Watch part two for the review.